Welcome back to What Are Tea Nibs with General Disturbance. This is the Crusader 5.5 inch SP. It's the tier 7 British SPG located on the south spawn of Mountain Pass. This one is under the command of Dr. Nick's Garage. Well, yes, he's normally streaming. In fact, he's streaming right at this very moment. And he sent us in a replay that we can actually do for ourselves. Game on. Well, it's the only arty that drives backwards. And that's because uh, the howitzer is actually mounted in front of the vehicle so the engine can be mounted at the rear. It's basically a Crusader tank with the turret missing. And instead, they use the howitzer, a 4.5 inch howitzer, capable of 450 alpha. And they've mounted it at the front of the vehicle to counterbalance the engine. And it's got 28 millimeters of penetration. 11.31 seconds is the standard reload and you can see that Dr. Nix has got 9.05. He fires a snapshot in. Oh, we've got somebody behind the bush. Somebody was looking behind that bush at that precise moment and got hit. Rounds out the Rudy. He pulls back. He takes a hit. Yes, a lot of tanks, when they get notification of shells on the way in, they pull back. The Skoda must have been the tank that was hit blind because he suddenly missing some hit points and now he's missing some more so yes it's a good idea to actually aim towards the rear of the vehicle now we didn't get to see what happened to that shell but i suspect that the skoda managed to dodge the shell that came back now from this position dr mix can hit the enemy tanks at the other end of this pass the western pass vk 2801 takes a hit for 188 so that's a good hit gonna fire behind that bush well, it hit the ground, but we know there was an enemy tank nearby. In fact, there's a 1375 there, but he's going to go for the CS44, because he's the one that's further forward. And he takes three hit points of splash. Okay, Dr. Nix might want to move a little further forward, because it seems to me that they're pulling back. But no, he's going to stay where he is for the moment, because now he's aiming for the north end of the bridge. But he's got a flat reticule, which means he has to move forward because otherwise he won't be able to hit these tanks. He's letting it dial in, rounds out. There's normally somebody behind that rock. They use that rock to watch down the road towards our teammates. And in fact, we've got an SMB CC 56 in the vicinity, just nearby. Okay, that rock's blocking him, so he's gonna have to change position. And in the meantime, he's now gone to the Western Pass again. And his first shot narrowly misses the CS44. Now he's going to try and hit the T28 HTC, but he pulls back. And so Dr. Nix fires around in. Now, admittedly, that one was ahead of the T28. There was always a possibility he might have moved forward to try and get out of the way of the shell. And so now we're firing one bang on target, and it's a direct hit. Okay, the next one's going to be the Churchill 7. He's marked the target, lets the SMBCC know who we're firing at. Oh, that was a big hit. 203 hit points off that one. But we're going to have to pull back for the moment, or at least get into cover, because an enemy VK-3002D has suddenly turned up nearby. And in fact, actually now, I'm going to try and get shots on this guy. See what we can do. Should be fun. Lines it up, and grabs out. Yes, direct hit, 112. Okay, that tank is stunned so he must have been hit by a shell from our Hummel who's on the hill above us oh we got spotted by the Yag Panther and we just blocked a shot from his gun for 320 hit points that was at least um, a 105 millimeter round I think I'm pretty sure he's got the 105 millimeter now we're not loaded yet but here comes the BK oh but he got hit 145 and we're having to retreat because the enemy is near enough in sight. Okay, we're almost ready to go again. They've gone behind the rock. We fire one in to try and hit the Yag Panther. Didn't get luck there. But he's come round this side of the rock. He can't see us. Not now because we're in the bushes. That lands alongside him. This is getting exciting. This guy is actually really close to us right now. And we, you can see where the shell hit him the last time. It actually went in just underneath the gun mantlet. And now we are in sight of that Yak Panther. We're going up to the top of the hill. 
So we've already taken one hit from an enemy uh, tank. And now we're about to receive another enemy tank into the cap area. Let's hope our teammates get back in time. We've got a Cromwell on the way. Oh, this is really interesting. Dr. Nix is outfoxing the Panther, And now he's going to shoot at the guy's side. Now, can we get round behind him before he can turn? Yes, we can. In fact, that's making it even worse for him. Now that Cromwell's turned up, he's taken another hit from Dr. Nix. And now he's retreating. But you see, the good thing about the Crusader is it can fire as it retreats. He's turning to face the enemy. And he kills him with his next round. 4.5 inch howitzer defeats a 105mm gun. Okay, so now he's turned around. We're capping at the other end. So it looks like we are going to win this game. But there's a VK-3002D, the same one we fired at before. And he is still nearby. Okay, so we're moving to a position where we can get a shot. In fact, now the enemy arty's coming to play. He's trying to cross the bowl towards us. Rounds out. Yes, a direct hit on the gun shield for 197. And he's out the game, killed by the Type 58. Now we're going for the VK. Let's line it up. Oh, lovely shot. 213 hit points. He's almost wiped out. Now we're looking at a Basotto a short distance away. We've stopped capping. Rounds out. That was so close to the Basotto. We're looking at the VK again. He is a one shot to us now. You can see where the other shells impacted. Oh, and that one got him in the engine bay and he's out the game. And that's the second kill for Dr. Nix. Okay, so we know there's a Basotto nearby. Is he gonna try and come to our cap? Or is he going to try and go up the other end of the map towards our teammates? Well, our teammates are actually being attacked at this moment by two enemy tanks. In fact, we've got a Hellcat up there. And the T-28 HTC and an M4A3 E8 Stop is up there. Advance. Okay, the Hellcat's gone up on top of the hill, the ramp, to try and defend himself against the enemy tanks. We're holding this cap area at the moment to stop the Basotto from capping. The Basotto has gone the other side of the bowl. He's heading towards our Hellcat teammate. We can just smell, make him out in our sights. We fire around him. Unfortunately, the Basotto stopped to take a shot at the Hellcat. And unfortunately, he takes him out. Lining up another shot. Rounds out. The Basotto turns. He knows he's under RT attack. Now, there's only one left on Dr. Nix's team, and that's him. So the enemy is probably going to want to try and kill us all to gain the extra bonus. But if they do do that, it's going to cost them a lot. Because Dr. Nix is going to make them pay. The view range of this RT is 275 meters. So he should be able to see the enemy before they get too close. He's parked himself in this nice little bush here. If they come across the bowl, he will see them. You'll probably see them at the other end of the bowl before they get into it and then he can line up a nice kill shot. All of them are low on hit points so they could all still lose the game. Or rather Dr. Nix could win the game and here comes the first one. It's the HTC and he pulls back just a little to use the bush mechanic on him. Lines it up and yes wipes him out. Completely wipes him out with that round. 77 hit points. And now he's only facing two. Changes bushes. Just in case the other enemies worked out where he was. And of course, if they do come down the bridge road, and they might decide to do that, then at least he's got a chance of hitting them. And one of them has gone down the bridge road. It's the Basotto. He's going to try and take him out. No, it was a little too high. He aimed a little high. Now, the Basotto didn't see him. What's he going to do? Is the E8 at the other end still waiting for Dr. Nix to turn up? Or is the Basotto going to turn around and come back in this direction? You can see these checking. I'm wondering if he's going to go after the Basotto.
I have the feeling the E8 decided to go down the ice road to get to Dr. Nix's cap. And one of them is capping. So Dr. Nix is going to do his best to try and spot the enemy without being spotted himself. He's turning to face the enemy. Will they be facing this direction? He's climbed the edge of that cliff to see if he can spot him. He can't. He can see the cap through his sights, but he doesn't know where in the cap the enemy is. And the E8 has just come up behind him, and he will have spotted us. And the enemy stopped capping. He's all waiting on. Oh, he gets a hit, but we have taken a hit from him for 111, and now we've taken another shot in the tracks. This will be a kill shot if it hits him. It does. He's down to just one enemy now, the Basotto, who sounds like he's coming straight for us. And Dr. Nix is running. Now, remember, this is the only arty that can fire on enemies as they run away. Or rather, as they run away from the enemy. And trust me, I've done it. It's so funny when the enemy gets wiped out and they're chasing a tank and they think they can't fire backwards. They can. He's waiting for the Vasotta to come around the corner. Mr. Nick, Dr. Nix has only got 111 hit points left. He's anticipating the Vasotta will suddenly appear and then he'll wipe him out with one round. If he doesn't hit him, he will quickly relocate I think you can see where one of the shells from that E8 actually hit the gun you can see directly on the gun there's a mark where the arm piercing shell went in well the Soto's decided to cap to try and draw Dr Nix to come back so Dr Nix is going to oblige he's going to come back but it might be painful for the Basotto. I'm sure the Basotto is thinking to himself that that, uh, that arty is going to make himself visible. Oh, Dr. Nix has worked out where he is. Going up the cliff, located the target. And the Basotto knows that he's been spotted now and we're aiming for him. Come on, Dr. Nix, you can do it. He got a direct hit, but it wasn't enough to wipe out the enemy. He's going to have to relocate him again. Oh, he killed him with a blind shot. And he's won the game. Dr. Nix has saved the game for his teammates. Well, that was an amazing game for Dr. Nix in the Crusader SP with the stock gun. He got an ace tanker out of that game. I would have expected nothing less after the uh, performance he put up, as well as a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He actually ended up with five, one short of getting a top gun and one third of the enemy team. He also picked up a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he managed to get 11. He got a Starks medal. He killed at least two enemy tanks. In fact, he killed five, but he also received at least two hits from the enemy. In fact, he received a lot more than that and also um, survived the battle, having received damage or loss of at least two thirds of his hit points or, or damage blocked by that uh, two thirds of his hit points, um, amounting to two thirds. He also got a Gauze medal for de dealing more damage than eight times the hit points of his own vehicle, a high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game, and also a Confederate medal for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. His win eight from that battle, 8,168, which is Super Unicum and a lot more. The only reason he hasn't got a Collar Belloff out of that one was there wasn't enough enemy left on the enemy team at the point that he was left alone. There was only three enemy tanks left at that point. And so he was only facing three, but boy, did he make that look good. Very, very good indeed. Let's have a look at team score and see how he did. Well, the highest damage was easily Dr. Nix. He managed to get 2,946 out of that game. The next highest scorer was the T28 HTC, and he saw him out of the game with 1,747 hit points. And the third highest damage was the VK302D. And remember, he took that guy out as well with 1,592. When it came to kills, Dr. Nix had that as well. Five kills to him, four kills to the VK3002D, and three kills to the T3485M on his own team, the T28HTC on the enemy team, and the Basotto, the last tank to be killed with a blind shot. 
he got three kills as well. When it came to base XP, he's got that one as well. In fact, he's the only player to get over a thousand base in the game. He got 1,081. 821 went to the T3485M on his own team. And 689 went to the Type 58 on his own team. And what a performance as well. Getting all three columns, getting the top. Let's have a look at detail. 36 shots fired, 20 direct hits on the enemy, but none of them penetrated. 31 splashes as well, 2,946 hit points, of which 1,255 were at more than 300 meters. So you can see he did at least 1,000, well, nearly 1,700 hit points of damage at close range. Four hits received from the enemy, two of them penetrated, two non-penetrations. One of those non-penetrations actually hit the track. That was the Yank Panther early on in the game. And it was a 105mm round, which would have severely damaged uh, Dr. Nix if it hadn't hit the tracks. The other non-penetrating shot was actually from the E8, and that hit the gun. If you notice, there was some damage to the actual gun. Just underneath, it was the reciprocating mechanism on the howitzer, which actually uh, was hit. And it's a big red mark where the armor-piercing shell went in. Of course, it is part of, it's technically a module on the vehicle, but it didn't do sufficient damage to actually um, stop Dr. Nix. And so he was able to carry on. The other penetrating rounds did do actual damage, I'm afraid. 11 enemy vehicles were attacked, five were killed, and he did two um, hit points or, or caused damage to two um, enemy players, or it's not two enemy players, actually, it's uh, two hit points of damage assistance in the game. He got 59 defense points when he reset the cap. That was with the uh, Basotto still capping. And he got 40,796 credits on a premium account. And after repair, ammunition, resupply, and consumables, he took away a loss of 10,720 credits. That was mainly down to the fact that he had consumables and they actually blew most of his credits away. 1,621 XP for the battle. There was no multipliers, so that's all the experience points he took away. But boy, did he take a win away. I'm sure most of his teammates who were still watching at the point that he was all alone against three enemy tanks thought that, oh my God, we're going to lose this. But then they should know it's Dr. Nix. He's an expert arty player. And expert arty players and arty players in general can win battles. And Dr. Nix showed them how it can be done with one of the most difficult arties to control, the Crusader SP with a stock gun. So what an incredible game by Dr. Nix. Congratulations. That one was really exciting right up to the end. I hope you enjoyed this replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.